Good morning, friends, and happy Saturday. I am on my way to Target because I have two returns that I need to make. And I think getting that vlog under my belt after so long, like, kind of reset me and, like, excited me to do it again. Not that I wasn't excited, just like you need that first one again to kind of like get in a groove. So yeah, it's Saturday. I had a really great week at work. Um, it was busy and crazy and some days felt really long, but it was a good week. And so much good work was accomplished as a team. Uh, so yeah, it was a good week. I hope all of you had a good week. I hope that there were moments of uh, laughter and joy, but also some moments of struggle because definitely things didn't go perfectly this week, but in all of those opportunities, we were able to learn something new. A, oh, a huge tree just fell there. Um, we were able to make some adjustments, learn some new things, and get a little bit better. So embrace those struggles and try to find those moments of like, what can I learn from this right now? Or how can we improve? We're definitely in that realm right now of like, things are going to be messy, but as we work through it, that's when we'll fix it and that's when it'll get better. So I'd encourage you just to like embrace that because it is 2020 and that's what needs to happen. Yeah, so I am off uh, to run some errands this morning, and this morning for some reason I was thinking a lot about politics. Now listen, I am not going to get into my political view, um, although I'm wearing a shirt today that expresses mine. And here's the deal, my friends. My friend Stephanie in North Carolina has a very different political view than me. She believes in different policies and she thinks differently about some things and guess what stephanie and i get along amazingly well we have spent hours upon hours together when i lived there i probably spent a majority of time with stephanie and there was never a time in all of those hours spent where we didn't tell each other we loved each other or just listen to one another's point of view without judgment or anger or aggressiveness and just talked. And that's the point, my friends. We don't have to agree. You watching this might disagree with me in every political fashion and every policy decision and it's a fundamental disagreement and guess what I can still accept you and love you and be kind to you and treat you with respect I don't have to agree with you you don't have to agree with me but that doesn't give us the permission to treat each other disrespectfully or unkindly because we think differently. If you go outside of politics, we feel differently and think differently about many things that are not political. I love Brussels sprouts. You might hate them. You might fundamentally disagree with Brussels sprouts. And guess what? I could still love you and be kind. I think what our world needs is a difference of opinion in some ways because that's how there are checks and balances. We have to have multiple opinions and multiple thoughts because people do need to be pushed and challenged in really thoughtful and respectful ways. So I think as we go into these last couple days before the election, and I think even after the election, I mean, I mean, just in our world in general, no matter if there's an election or not, we are going to see these battles taking place. And it does make me really nervous. And some of you will be really excited about the outcome of the election, no matter which way it goes. Some of you will be greatly disappointed. I will be devastated based on the outcome of this election. But what's not going to happen is I'm not going to go out and treat people disrespectfully or think less of them as human beings. So 
I think, I think so many YouTubers and people on social media like avoid any political conversation. I'm gonna let you know right now. You're gonna see on my sweatshirt. I am not. I live my life. You're gonna see my political point of view, and oh, most of you have already figured it out. You can choose for that to be an unre a reason to unfollow me, which I totally respect. But at the end of the day. I've committed to this channel of being me, being exactly who I am, and like not hiding it for the sake of like fear. I respect your opinions. I respect your thoughts. Some of you have expressed them very loud and proud to me. And all I have said is, I respect you, and I think the difference of our opinions makes the world a better place, and I wish you all the best. That's where we gotta get my friends. You don't have to agree but you always have to be kind. With that, I just got to Target and I'm going to return some things and then peruse it really quick and then run my errands. Alrighty, I hope that resonated with some of you. I love you, no matter what you think. Alexa, turn on the tree. So I thought I'd show you a couple things that I picked up I'm really excited about. And then I do want your feedback on a couple things. So I got some really cute Christmas pajamas. All my Vlogmas pajamas are bought and purchased. Um, I did pick up, I wanted to get a little mistletoe. So I got one of those. And then I also got from the Studio McGee collection, the Cypress Juniper Reed Diffuser. I've never used any of their diffusers, so I don't know much about it. Don't know where I'll put this, but it's like a little sled garland, which I thought looked really cute from the Wonder Shop line, which is adorable this year. And then I found this Studio McGee wooden tree that's going to go in my mudroom. And then these are the Studio McGee stockings. I wish you could fill them, they're so soft. But next year, this is going to be my color palette. Uh, with a big emphasis on this rusty copper color. So when I see stuff like that this year, I'm gonna pick it up. And then one of my favorite finds were these really beautiful and neat wooden houses. And I do honestly think these work like through multiple seasons. So I bought one of each of the sets. I think they were $5 a piece. So really excited about those. All right. So I talked to some of you on Instagram. I did like an Instagram live and someone said something that kind of has sealed the deal for me. They said, if you are asking the question, you already know the answer. And that is that this garland needs to move. Um, as much work as it was and the hours it took to put up, I know that I will be really happy if I move it over to that doorway and just let this section of the house shine um, as you move towards the fireplace, I know it is the right call. Um, if you're asking the question, you know the answer. I think that's great feedback. So I have dissected most of the picks that I could find. There are still some hidden in there that I'm going to miss. Here's my deal, friends. I'm gonna have to cut this um, expensive garland down, and I think people don't do that because they're scared. I'm gonna cut it down, and it's okay, because I can wire it back together next year if I need it for a bigger space. I think people think uh, artificial garlands are not forgiving to work with. They're very forgiving. I can literally wire these pieces back together. I could cut it down into little two-foot pieces, and you would never know. Um, when I wire it back together, if I ever use it again. I'm gonna show you exactly step-by-step step how I'm going to do this though. So this is gonna be a little tutorial video for Garland. Now, this is not going to be for everyone, but Steven and I have become like masters of like hole patching, sanding, and all the things. So literally, I'm going to use finishing nails. They're about this big. They're tiny, tiny finishing nails and a hammer, and I am going to put it, let me show you. I'm going to go around my molding, and I'm going to tap them in around the edges. Um, here I might have to be a little bit um, more strategic and thoughtful, and then I'm gonna tap two at the very bottom, 
When I pull these out, I'll pull them out very carefully. I actually won't pull them out at the end of Christmas with a hammer. I will use needle nose pliers because they're tiny. And then I'll patch the holes, paint that, sand it, paint it, and you'll never know. But that's the only way you can get really heavy garlands really secure. Command hooks, depending on the finishing of your paint, it might not work. So I don't recommend it. And I know many of you are like nervous about tapping nails in, but I've never had an issue. Just get really good patcher, let it dry fully, sand it down, paint over it. Um, all right, I'm going to get this all tapped around and then I'll take this one off. It's going to be a mess, but it's going to be worth it in the long run. I have cut 12 pieces of wire because I have 12 finishing nails around the border of this doorway. I'm now going to take each wire and I'm going to attach it to the finishing nail just by wrapping it around several times. And then I'm going to open up the wire so I can like basically set the guard garland into it and wrap it around. Once I get all the wires, I'll actually show you what that looks like. Now you can see that I have put the florist wire around the nails and then I stretched it out on both sides so it's really wide open. That way I can just kind of lay the garland right in and then they're long enough that I can grab them easily and wrap around. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm just gonna cut this one down. It's gonna make such a mess, friends, and get it over on this doorway. I think I'm gonna start on this side and just take as much as I need. All right, wish me luck. And this is why Flocked Garland is a beast to work with. Like, look at all that I'll have to clean up. All right, but this is now gotten here. I think it's the right call once that big garland comes into that space. <sighs> all right, now all I'm going to do is I'm gonna fluff and make sure this is all evened out um, and I won't clean up until it's all done. I have it all fluffed and evened out. I'm really happy with it. And now I'm just going to work within a couple spaces right now so the first thing is i want to get like a cluster of pine cones in the dead center and i want to fill in some bald spots with the darker pine it's really important for me to have this similar dark pine running through and to break up that frosting a little bit so get the pine cones i'm going to do a cluster of three in the center and then arrange some of these darker pine needles in there. This actually looks really nice. I love that I got these punches of green in. Um, on the camera, it feels like it stands out way more the way it balances out the white and the green, but it actually doesn't stand out as strongly as you would think. All right, pine cones are in. I am willy-nilly, I don't overthink this point. I am just going to take all these extra greens that I have and just shove them in the garland and then I'll mess with them and rearrange them, but there is no rhyme or reason. I just look for empty spaces and fill them in. The garland is now moved to this spot in the house. Um, I think it feels like the right decision. Um, I kept it a little bit simpler as far as color and everything, but I'm really happy with it. And now this space will be wide open for that big garland. I hung that little mistletoe that I bought today. So the huge dramatic garland will be there. All right, I think I'm happy with this. That also now feels like more of a piece of the dining room, which I like. All right, friends. For dinner, we are doing a really simple pasta bake. I have some leftover pasta in the pantry and I just wanna keep it very, very low key today. So that is what we are doing. So while my water's getting ready to boil, I'm gonna start mixing the ricotta. And all I'm going to do is Add a pinch of salt, some pepper, a little bit of crushed pepper for heat, onion powder, just a hint of garlic powder, not much at all, because I'm actually going to also drop a little spoonful of minced garlic in there. Is this enough? Yeah, go ahead and throw it on the cupboard, babe. A good, mm, 
a good amount of uh, minced garlic. And I'm just gonna combine all that together. I wanna let this sit for a little bit while the pasta's getting ready so all the flavors kind of blend together. And then Steven grabbed some parsley out of my herb garden outside. I'm just gonna rough chop. Parsley. Let's throw that in there. And then what I'm going to do is throw this in with the pasta. Add a little bit of a blush sauce to it. Top it with some mozzarella. And voila, that will be my dinner tonight. I am going to go ahead and put a little bit of sauce. This is so good. It is from Wegmans. They have an Italian restaurant called Amore. Um, and this is their blush sauce. It is so, it's unreal. All right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and add my ricotta into this pot. It's a, my pasta's still really warm, the pot's hot. That's gonna help um, the ricotta really distribute nice and even across. I'm just gonna stir that in. It smells so good. And I'm going to add part of my sauce. And now, I'm just going to dump. All right, dinner is all done and super quick, super simple, but super delicious. It's an easy go-to. Right, Bubby? Yes. Yes, pasta's my favorite. He loves carbs. All right, let's eat dinner. Dinner? Can we eat dinner? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Good morning, friends. It is going on 6.45, and it is Sunday. I didn't vlog after dinner because I didn't do anything, um, and I went to bed pretty early. Um, I'm listening to Francesca Battistelli's um, This Christmas album, and I'm getting ready to FaceTime with my really good friend, Rebecca. Um, we do this like every other Sunday. So, she lives in Texas, I'm in New York, so it's a nice time for us to just connect, and yeah, so that's what's happening. Good morning, good morning sunshine. Kind of matching. We are kind of matching. Is that Pottery Barn? Um, I don't remember where I got it. It's really, it, I've had it forever. Oh, I have to get some new robes. Mine are in rough shape, because I wear mine every day. Mine too, mine too. I have like a rotation of robes and moo-moos, and like daytime moo-moos, and nighttime moo <laughs> Everyone needs a nighttime. Well, I'm wearing <laughs> dinosaur Christmas pajamas. <laughs> Steven was like, I bought them yesterday when I was on a Target run, and he was like, I had him sitting on the counter, and he goes, are those kids' pajamas? And he thought I bought them for like someone's children. I was like, no, they're mine. <laughs> and he was like, oh my god. <laughs> You're like, but there's mom versions. I was <laughs> gonna say, I bought them out of like the family like pajama <laughs> section. I don't care. I might run back there this morning. They started setting out their Christmas stuff while I was there. I was like, would you like help? I'll help you. <laughs> yeah, cheers. Ready? I love it. Oh my God, the Murkat. I can't handle it. Nick was like, why are you getting this? And I hate it. I was like, you don't know. She might want to be a Murkat. <laughs> Did she just chill at it? Yeah, she, she like didn't even notice it. She was like, what? Oh, okay, I guess I'm <laughs> 
I just went around the house and dusted and swept the floors and wiped down the counters and all of that stuff. It's been a pretty low-key Sunday. Um, I've been texting one of my neighbors. I think her and I are gonna go for a walk and chat, um, which I'm really excited about. I don't um, always socialize a lot with our neighbors and it's one of the things I really wanna do more of. Um, so, uh, neighbor Hillary that has always just been so kind and warm. Um, and her and I are gonna go for a walk. And hopefully it's the start of a really great friendship. Um, so yeah, the house is really clean. Everything is put away. I also have a stew in the crock pot. I highly recommend this crock pot. I really, really like it. My big um, Cuisinart one from Crate and Barrel is sometimes really inconvenient because it's almost too large. It's for like 10, 12 people. So this is like a six quarter. Um, from the Hearth and Home collection, or Hearth and Hand, I always get it confused, at Target, and it's really nice. I love like this matte finish. It's like very nice and clean on the counter. So I have a stew going in there, and everything is clean and tidy. So yeah, that's where we're back at. from my walk. I also went to Home Goods and Michaels. I wore a hat all day. <laughs> So my hair looks like that. So I'm gonna try to keep you from the top of my glasses down. Um, but now I want to spruce up my kitchen cabinets, which sounds weird, but I'm gonna teach you a really easy way. I've actually just pulled out the paper um, from this one yesterday. And what I'm going to end up doing is taking all this stuff out and then I'm just gonna back the back of the um, cabinets and you won't believe it, but I actually have wrapping paper that is the same exact plaid as my ribbon, except at a smaller like scale, because the ribbon is so large. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to snap a photo because I really like how I have things in there. I haven't done the sides yet. I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, but I'm going to pull all that stuff out and I'm going to show you exactly how I do it. And I have all the shelves pulled out and all the things out. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe this out before I put everything back. But I'm going to take some painter's tape because it doesn't damage surfaces. And I'm just going to stick a bunch of painter's tape. I'm going to make sure I get in there and like crease it down and make it as flat as possible. And I want to make sure it's vertical because if you put the loop this way, it can slide. But if you put it vertical, it can't. And I'm just going to put painter's tape all over this. Lay the paint lay the paper on top of it, and then cut it with my X-Acto knife. Now I'm just going to measure a piece of paper wider, and then I'll have to do another strip for the top. It's not quite going to reach, but I'm just going to measure from here to here, cut it a little wider, and then I'm gonna crease it in and cut the excess with my X-Acto knife. So that's all I'm gonna do. I mean, we're two minutes into this project, and Actually, it's been four minutes total. Now, I have this tool that I use for when I um, do wallpapering, and I'm just gonna take it because it'll really help ensure that I get it all into the creases. And when I run my X-Acto knife down it, it'll just cut a lot cleaner. And I know that my paper went the whole way into this corner. Just gonna take one more, and now I'm just going to take my X-Acto knife and run it down the edge. So it is pretty subtle, but look how great that looks. It looks so fun and festive, and I love how it ties in this. And then I can change it out with something for like a different season or something that I keep all the time. I'm really, really loving it. It's just like the little things that make such a huge difference. I'm also now going to do it in the back of the two upper cabinets up there. So same process, same thing. Um, I'll show you when it's done. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. I love it so much. You don't have to buy anything to fill those cabinets that are seasonal. The seasonal piece is the paper behind it and it's just the stuff that's in there regularly. Really happy I just hung with these Reese with command hooks, and I love the way they look um, on the windows. But I don't like them hanging from command hooks because it looks like they're just floating. So I am going to add some 
blue velvet ribbon to them. I love that so much more. Makes a huge difference. I'm actually doing something a little tricky though. So I put the velvet on and I closed it up in the window and I actually slit a little hole in the velvet and the wreath is still hanging on the command hook because that allows it to still hang really flat, which is what I want. I want it to hang really flat. So I'm just slitting like a little hole. I'll show you on the next one how I'm doing it. I want you all to see what I mean. So I have the wreath here and all I'm doing is I'm cutting a little slit in the back of the ribbon and I'm just kind of making like an X so that that hook can go through here and still connect to the wreath. And then I'm just gonna close this up in the window. That looks so good. That's exactly what that section needed. I felt like it was a little flat, um, but now that just looks perfect. I love it so much. The house. I am telling you, this is the most beautiful the house has ever looked for Christmas. We're gonna get that big garland there. Um, yeah, I'm really, really happy with it. It looks stunning. All right, friends, Steven is downstairs watching a movie at seven o'clock. I am going to go to bed. The stew is so good, um, but I have a really busy day tomorrow. So I wanted to show you my Vlogmas books. They're all here. Um, they arrived and I'm excited about them. I'll probably need to, a couple more because these won't last me the whole season but the first one is I'm going to read Agatha Christie's Midwinter Murder really excited about that and then I am also very excited about Christmas a biography it is like a history of Christmas and really really interesting I'm excited to read it and it's like all about different celebrations and how things came to be. I'm really pumped about it. The next one I'm going to be reading is called In a Holidays, and it's about a woman living with her parents. She's a going nowhere job and has made no romantic connections, and perhaps that will all change. Um, excited about that. The other one I'm going to be reading is a new release. It's called A Dog's Perfect Christmas. It had really great reviews. I found it at Target. I was going to buy it online, but now I just was able to grab it this way. And then the last one is the Country Club Murder Series. I've really enjoyed a couple of these, and this one's Cold as Ice, so it felt fitting for Christmas. And then lastly, I did pick up Unexpected. It's a 25-day Advent devotional, so that will be my devotional. I'll leave these linked down below if there's something that interests you. Um, feel free to check it out. But that's about all that is going on. I'm going to get this vlog edited on Monday and to you Monday night, hopefully. I just don't feel like editing this evening. But I'm going to sign off and I'm going to leave this like I leave all of them. Take care of yourself, take care of others, and be kind. Kindness is free. Give to everyone. Until next time, my friends. Bye-bye.